Hello, and welcome to another OpenGL screencast. Um, well, before we get into what we're going to talk about today, I just want to note that I'm trying to make sure my font is a little bigger. I've had some requests for being able to see that a little easier rather than putting it in full screen mode. So let me know if this is something you like. If it is, then I will continue to make sure that my the font is a little bigger and easier to see. Um, otherwise, uh, I'll probably still do it. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. Either way. Um, so today we're going to be talking about a little bit about blending. So blending is normally what you think about when you, you think of transparency or opacity. So up till now, you haven't really used the alpha channel in the in GL color. So it takes four values, um, RGB and then the A. And really the A hasn't been used a whole lot. So um, how does the alpha really affect what's drawn on the screen? So when you enable blending, um, alpha is used to combine that value of the fragment with that, which is already, with the pixel that's already in the frame buffer, so the source and the destination. So um, it happens after your scene's been rasterized and converted to fragments, but before the final pixels are drawn into the frame buffer. So we can use this to see um, whether or not we actually need to draw something at all. So it's actually really cool. So we'll go ahead and make this real quick just so you can see. Um, obviously nothing already done. So you can take a look and see. So that so you can see there's the these are kind of op opaque. You can see through them. And they have this alpha channel, which is set and even with works with lighting, which is pretty cool. So as the lighting is on the same side, it makes it a little easier, harder to see through it. Um, so that's what we're gonna be looking at today. And uh, let's get right into it here. So as always, we're going to be doing a little bit of blending. This is just a regular setup. Nothing new here, OK? Um, drawing scene. Let's, before we go to the draw scene, let's go to look at this play. And let me just note that we have the depth test enabled, as always. So this is going to come back, and we're going to have to think about that. And I'll explain why momentarily. Um, before we get into the actual codes of this, uh, we have an alpha one, which we'll, I'll show you in a little bit. This is the actual alpha that is set. Um, we can control that with two or three right now. The is input. Not you know we have a lot of things that we're being using right now, letter wise. Obviously, if you were making a game or an application, you probably wouldn't have shortcuts for all of these being being this way. But for for the sake of what we're doing right now, we're just building on the old ones. So. Uh, pretty soon, I'm sure I'll probably be getting rid of some of these, you know, lighting controls, etc., um, in future screencasts. But for now, we, they're still there. So um, one thing to note about these, obviously, is they've been added to common.h, screencast.h, globals. You need to go make sure you add those specific variables, and you could take a look at the code uh, later. So what are we doing here? We are drawing a scene as usual. Um, opaque is one of our uh, values. So if it's opaque. That means it's one of those nice, thick, um, one of these. You can't see through it. It's opaque. So we're just drawing a bunch of cubes here uh, at specific spots. This is just a fancy way to draw cubes at specific spots. Nothing really special going on. Um, then we're putting on that stained glass window type um, texture, uh, turning opac opaque off, and then again drawing those cubes. And then before we clear it out, we just go ahead and set those back to the default values. So um, let's go take a look at shapes. So this is really where all the magic happens uh, right now. We have it just inside cube, so I've obviously changed this a little bit from last time. And so if we're not in opaque mode, we want to enable blending, as always. And at the end of this, we got to make sure we disable blending. And we turn that depth mask back to true, which I'll explain in a second. And uh, disable textures. So so we're really, okay, so we have alpha 1. If it's on, we use this function right here. Um, if it's not, we use this function here. We turn the GL depth mask to false, which I'll explain momentarily. And, of course, we bind our textures and all that. So GL blend func, basically, you know, so controls how the values in the frame fragment are processed. Source are combined with those already in the frame buffer destination. So that's what I already said. So... Um, there's a great table example. I'm, I'm not going to bring it up now, but I put a link right here to it. 
Uh, it's an older version of the book, in the red book, but it explains every single constant here. GL0, GL1, GL destination color, GL to source color, etc., etc. Um, and what their RGB blend is, as well as their alpha blend. So for example, GL1 is an RGB of 111 with an alpha blend of 1. Um, so, or let's look at source alpha. So source alpha is the alpha value for the source, obviously. And it is also uh, the alpha blend is the alpha source. And so this and then the destination is GL1 or GL1 minus, so 111 minus the source is alpha. So, I mean, most of these are pretty self-explanatory, but the, the table is still something really interesting to look at. I'm only going to cover these two today and just show you kind of what each of them do, do and um, I'll let you go ahead and play with each of the rest of these and see what really works best for you. Normally, in most applications, you're going to use something uh, similar to GL, one of these two. They're the most common, commonly used, and... Um, but, I mean, you know, you might have something specific that you want to do in your application. So, uh, GL depth mask. So, when you're doing 3D, we need to make sure that the depth buffer is read-only um, when we're doing this blend. And I'll show you what happens um, if we don't. So, let's go back to the code here. Not the code, excuse me, the application. And so, by default, we are right here with the, the source, alpha, and 1. So, looks pretty decent. Um, it works well, goes all the way around, um, and everything blends properly. So, um, depending on your application, though, so and and things matter as far as order of drawing. So let's turn on uh, the one to make it be one minus source alpha. Um, so now you can see it still looks decent right now, but oh, you just saw that. See this? See how this is in front of this guy? Um, and the same thing happened down here. Say this guy's in front of this guy. It it's not necessarily drawn correctly depending on you know how you're doing your your drawing so just pay attention to to what's going on and it'll help to uh, make your code a little bit more robust and look a little nicer um, you can change the alpha of these so obviously alpha is really low you can barely see it um, up to really high and you can see really well um, so let's go ahead and like I said let's change this death mask to just we'll just comment it out for a second we make that, and so it's it's not anything specific for this guy right now, but um, it really ends up coming into play when you're uh, dealing with a ton and ton of objects, and it'll make it end up being not um, as fluent as you think it is. Uh, by commenting that out, you can actually see that I fixed that one problem, which is actually kind of cool, but... Um, things aren't going to end up being exactly the way you want. So you need to just necessarily play around with things and, and find what you want. Um, but it is recommended for uh, 3D programming uh, specifically that you need to make sure you uh, make the depth buffer, buffer be read-only um, while you do this. So uh, the rest of this square is actually all the same. Um, we just have a couple of opaques uh, with the colors specific in here. Um, I move the, the vertices around to make them these uh, correct drawing directions with my texture coordinates so that my images were face up. So anyway, um, that's it for this guy. Uh, guys, hope you've uh, had some uh, interesting thoughts about what you can do with some blending and some really cool effects that you can add. Um, next up, we're probably going to be talking about anti-aliasing and then probably fog it after that. So a couple more short topics and... Uh, Happy programming.